Hello everyone. Let's talk about endo excess. Now, according to me, endo, I consider it as class four because I feel like if you know how to do it, it's an easy task. However, a bit technique sensitive. If you don't know the right technique, then you're gonna make this, that's, this is the most difficult task. However, if you know the right technique, you can do it in less than half an hour. Now, what I've seen is with endo, a lot of people still don't understand the basics. They're still worried about, you know, should I see three canals, should I two canals, you know, long axis, this and that. If you try to do the clinical setting, what you do in the clinic at the endo, you might fail badly in this task. I'm gonna tell you some basic things. I want you to follow it and you would see that your endo becomes so easy. The only thing you have to learn in endo is one thing. Basic concept, that's good. One thing you have to learn with endo is indirect vision. Because 95% of your endo, I do literally almost 99% of my endo with indirect vision. If you are comfortable with indirect vision, you'll be fine with endo. All those points people scare you will talk about them. You don't have to worry about them. If you're not worried about indirect vision, what happens with endo is like this. I'm, I'm, I'm like the root canal chamber, right? People prep it like this. It's going like this or like this. What happens? They're not comfortable with indirect vision and their chair positioning. Because with endo, it's not like the front central incisors I'm sitting like this, right? You are sitting a bit at an angle to do it. So your body's a bit tilted and that's why it's important to double check, triple check, reassess before you keep pushing and doing the whole thing. And I personally feel the ergonomics and chair positioning lecture, which is in your bonus, would be a big, big benefit for all of you to make you understand your mistakes. So learn indirect vision. Now, how I learn indirect vision is, I would take one tooth and start from a central incisor and start drilling it, start, you know, uh, prepping the palatal surface from margin all the way to incisal until the whole tooth is gone until I've prepped the whole tooth from palatal to buccal, practicing indirect vision. From there, I go from central incisor to lateral incisor. Then you go to the canine that make your head level a bit hard. First premolar, first molar, second premolar, second molar. Slowly, slowly, until and unless you ruin some tooth, you cannot learn indirect vision. So, and trust me, it's not wasting teeth. It's getting your confidence up so you understand how indirect vision works. Other, otherwise, you end up ruining thousands of teeth more rather than spend 10 teeth. And do every day. Every day a tiny bit. Learn the motion. Learn the indirect vision. So endo, if you can learn indirect vision, endo would be good. Don't need to worry. Should be okay. Basic things will be talked now. People are like, "What is being conservative? What is a straight line axis? Do we have to see three canals from occlusal view?" I will be showing you all of that in the demo. The hands-on demo talks all about that. How to remove the remaining roof? How to avoid gorging? How to avoid divergent walls? Whenever you're doing endo task, do you need to focus on the following points? So many points. So many people tell you. But for me, endo is all about one thing. It's about roof. Because roof is like one of the major errors that even if you leave a tiny bit, a 0.00001% or 0.00001 millimeter roof is present, you fail the whole task. You cannot say that, no, my roof was very little. No. With endo, same as crown prep. If you're under prep, it's a straight fail. Doesn't matter how good and polished or good your margin is. Roof present, it's gone. So with endo, in my opinion, follow the basics, which I'll be teaching with hands-on. There should be no roof present. Do that, 
you kill the endo straight away. You don't need to worry about any other point. Minor errors, unless you do any major blunder in them, it's very hard to take you to the fail criteria. However, this error, no matter how good your endo is, like how good your crown is, fails you straight away. So the most major point people fail on, which I have seen 90% of the people fail, like all my friends even that we had to chat with and I used to tell them, I feel like you have a roof there because they make it so small and tiny, right? And they'd be like, I don't have a roof, but 90% of them, actually 95% or more, they have passed the exams, yes, but they have failed in the endo task. None of them have passed the endo task. You can see the results. Reason is, they don't understand one of the major errors there, roof. Now, a lot of people say roof is so important, excuse me. Now, a lot of people say if roof is so important, how to identify it? Again, you have the hands-on training, we'll be showing you how to identify it. However, there are three points. Three points to identify roof. One is, if you have a good loops and light, you can literally see endo roof present. I can literally, I have a good, uh, I use my oroscopic loops um, and the oroscopic light is so stunning. I can literally see, I can point out straight away, there's a roof present. Just looking at it, I don't have to use anything. That's why magnification is so important for endo and cavity prep tasks. So other ones, maybe not, but these two are so critical because if you cannot see something, how will you, how are you planning to do it? Visualization with your loops and good light. Now, a lot of people say I'll buy loops, but I don't buy light. So in the exam, you have it. But if you haven't practiced one year, how do you feel like doing the exam? And then that's called prayer and luck. You leave most on luck that hopefully I'll be able to find it. Hopefully you might know, right? This, we don't want that hopefully happening. Visualizing with the good loops and light with the probe. Now, probe, there are two ends. One is a sickle end, one is a bry old end of a sickle probe. I use the bry old end, but these days they're saying they don't get the bry old end anymore. And you see that in the hands-on what a bry old and what a sickle end is. If not, then you can use a sickle. But use a probe, find out. Third is, Slow speed burr in a slow speed hand piece, you're not gonna run it. You're just gonna go to the bottom and then lift it up. Lift it up and with the, I have seen with the normal high speed round burr because it's smooth with a slow speed uh, uh, round burr, it's a bit rough into it. So any small edge, it's gonna catch it. So slow speed round burr, again, we're gonna show you exactly with both things you're gonna check. These are the three things. So I want you to focus on these three points. These three points. Roof and how to point out and remove the roof. If you can work on that, trust me, your life becomes so much easier. And your endo becomes very good to passing. And there's no way you're failing your endo. But if you forget this major point, roof, you may do a stunning endo, like you may do a stunning crown prep. And again and again, I'm emphasizing because I've seen people failing on this all the time. They try to do a fancy work. And that's why when I started the technical training, I thought, no, we have to have some sort of fundamental rule first. So the ADC rules and all that came into place. Now, others are the minor points, right? Now the mi minor points are the cable surface angle has to be straight, has to be converging or diverging. There should be no roughness around the walls. Is manual rubbing good? If you don't want to do with manual rubbing, should we do waving motion? Never go for under. With endo, I say it openly like crown prep. If you're in doubt that your margin is a bit less than 1.2, Better to go over than under. Same with endo. If you feel that you have a roof there and you are in doubt, whenever in doubt, go for more. Don't go for less. Confidence, in my opinion, is the key. 
if you're not confident and that's why once I tell you all my tips and tricks and you know exactly how it's working, you should be more confident that you know the right ways to do it. You will see your work improving. You know the grading criteria. You know the basic tips and tricks. You, you, tricks. you know your work is getting along and your tooth is coming in shape. You should be more confident now that yes, I'm aware. Make sure you're confident. It's, it does improve. A lot of people say, oh, my work's maybe okay, maybe not okay. With their mental level, so much doubts in their mind, they cannot never produce a good work. So no, so don't be too cocky and say, I don't have to practice. No, you have to practice. But once you've done so much, you have to bring that confidence in your body and your hands so you can produce a bit better. Again, I always say practice is the key. If you can't practice, you, you cannot learn anything. Nothing replaces hard work, pure hard work. I am a big believer in saying that yes, luck plays a role, but hard work beats everything, hands down. I'm not going to the other things about all walls should be visible from occlusal and extending and how to do reduce and stuff because I'm discussing that in the hands-on, which is showing you everything. Most importantly, Constantly show your hand uh, like work to someone. Why? Because you won't know what you're doing until someone tells you and that's why a third eye is so important. You may think your compass is going great and it used to happen with me. I thought my canine was stunning and I should show it to a prosthodontist friend who's like, Mac, you know what? I have not seen a stunning crown prep even by prosthodontist, but stunning. There's two things I think you can improve. And I was to see that way, I'd be like, wow. Yes, important to show it to someone. Don't say I know everything. You don't want to risk with these kind of things. You want to give you 100%. So continuous improvement is important. Now, if you say that uh, I'll get it done in six months when I'm there, that's again wrong. People say my work is so bad, I, I don't want to show it to anyone. You learn more with bad work rather than good work. So very important for you to show your work. Don't say I don't want to show it to someone. You have to show it to someone. Show your work to people. But don't show it to everyone who doesn't know himself and they may confuse you that, oh, your wall's not coming. Don't show it to everyone. Show it to someone. And that's why with this, I have a assessment session as well. If you're doing my training, then... It's my responsibility to keep assessing regularly and tell you your feedback. So you can do either a one-on-one -on -one assessment with me or we have a designated group now. Um, you can post it in there and uh, you already have the details of that and other members will help you and I'll help you. That's the final word there. Now, when I show this end, a lot of people say, oh, this, that. Again, this is a borderline to satisfactory somewhere in between that is not a pure satisfactory but this is to show you that if i'm in doubt i'd rather do an endo like this and pause and you will discuss that in detail in the hands-on training but i don't want to risk failing Ideal rule for the straight line axis, and you'll discuss that in detail about what a straight line axis means is. Because yes, straight line, what a straight line means. Ideally, you should see 100 to 90% of the mesiobuccal, distobuccal, and then 25% of the palatal, because the palatal canal is a bit bigger. Even in the mannequin as well, in the tooth. If you see 100, 100 or 90, 90 and 25 of the palatal, that means you have a good true straight line axis. The other way is you see 50, 50, 50. Now, if you see, this is most likely the mesiobuccal canal, I think. Me this, you cannot see the full canal, right? So there are two kind of straight line axes we get in the tooth. One is 100, 100 or 90, 90, 25 percent. 50, 50, 50. 
this shows that you have a straight line axis and we will discuss that in detail what a straight line axis means in the hands-on portion straight line axis means is and again people try to mold the words it means that there's a good chance you don't have a roof there's a good chance so whenever someone shows me and they say my mesio buckle, mesio buckle, distal buckle, I can see 100% and I literally see only 10% of the palatal. There are two things. One, it's not a complete straight line axis they have taken a shot from. Secondly, the straight line axis is not there. So when you see from the occlusal, what you see is 50, 50, 50 or 100, 125. This is the rule straight line axis. What straight line axis means is if I don't see a straight line axis, there's a higher chance you have left a roof in there. Same as if I see a good straight line axis, I say there's a good chance. Again, good or higher chance doesn't mean it's 100% and I stamp on it. There is no roof. But there's a higher chance you don't have a roof or you might have left a roof in there. That's the concept of straight line axis. 100, 100 or 90, 90, 25, 30 in certain instances or 50, 50, 50. When you see a straight line and you say, I can see 50, 50, 50, there's a good chance. You've done a straight line axis, there's a very less chance you've left a roof. However, what we do, we still check it. But if you see a tooth and there's no palatal, literally 5 to 10% of palatal visible and only 30% of the mesobuckle visible. I will be like, I don't know because I can't jump in the tooth and see, but there's a good chance you've missed it. And we'll discuss that in the hands-on training. Okay. I have a step-by-step -step diagrammatic uh, diagram. Diagrammatic representation that will tell you in detail how to start your endo. From where to start, where to end, and you will get that idea exactly how you can start or replicate that in your training. And I have a full video on that. But whatever main rule applies is we draw a center line on the tooth. We want to find the center point of the tooth and our demarcation point is that oblique ridge running. So oblique ridge, now there's a big oblique ridge, right? We want to see the inner border where the inner border touches, not the outer. 